welcome to Winnipeg. Now, I think I got our coffee cups in the right order, finally. Yep, starting tomorrow we'll be back to normal. We'll be using the Blue Jays cup like I should have done. What would it be, Friday? Anyway, doesn't matter. All right, check the uh, status on our paint. Nothing new. I'm disappointed with Canada Post. Yeah, what happened to you? Anyway, uh, well, if they say it'll, it'll be here tomorrow, maybe, maybe it will. Maybe, maybe they're just not scanning the stuff as it's going through the system like they usually do. Okay, enough about the uh, Canada Post. I did take this into the shower with me uh, yesterday afternoon. And uh, I did scrub it down with a, with a, with a paintbrush and sudsy water and uh, rinsed it off. Uh, so I think we probably got it pretty clean. I don't think it had a whole lot of grease on it anyway. The suggestion has been that the, that the uh, kits that are being produced now are pretty clean. A lot of people are commenting that, that they never, that they never wash their parts and they come out just fine. <laughs> yeah, another viewer suggested that I was, I was sort of uh, over-engineering this or something to that effect and uh, or overthinking this when I was, you know, using the ultrasonic cleaner. And that's true. I, I don't think I needed to make it that pristine. And the, and the side that, on, on this part right here, that, that I uh, removed the, the uh, that black, uh, I was going to say push-out grease, uh, but it, it's probably mold release. Uh, where is it here? Yeah, it's, it's so clean you can't even see it anymore. Uh, you know, that, I believe that that side is going to be up against something anyway. We don't see it, so it wouldn't have made a whole lot of difference. Uh, but it was kind of fun. You know, it was kind of fun. It, 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 a lot of it, I think, is, is psychological. It, you know, it's it's sort of like, uh, uh, let's say you're doing the Titanic and you're, you, you want to make sure that there's just the right number of rivets on each plate to keep make it authentic, you know, and you maybe you add one or scrape one off to get just the right number. Well, nobody really cares, but you care. You care. You have the, the satisfaction of knowing that uh, you've got it, is, is, you know, just about dead on. Uh, well, I'm sort of like that, I guess, maybe when I did the ultrasonic thing. Uh, it, it's not going to make that much difference. Uh, but but uh, at least I know that it's clean. <laughs> uh, anyway, now, as for this part here, uh, there's there's uh, two large pieces of clear plastic. This this one here will go on the other side of this one, and this is the part you look through. I'm not going to mess around too much with this, although you know, just as I'm speaking to you right now, I am getting reflection. Off of a off of the lights that are just behind you over your head, and there is it is bouncing off of here, and I'm oh I'm sort of seeing something on here that it almost looks like it could be grease, and, and I just noticed that right now for the first time, or it could be that the plastic is not, you know, pressed all that clear, but you got to get the light just exactly right for you to be able to see it. Um, so maybe I will look into that and see what, what I could maybe use to, you know, to wipe this down very carefully because I sure don't want to scratch it. I, I was also noticing that there's a couple of places right here where there was an, an injection, uh, uh, some, some sort of thing on it. There's a little, well, when, when we deal with it, I'll, I'll put the macro lens on and we'll look at it up close. I'm also noticing that up here on the, Right, right here. There's sort of like a little circle, almost, almost like a really large push-out pin or something was there. But you've got to get the light just right, or maybe I should say just wrong, to be able to see it. Um, I think that we are going to be able to see through this quite, quite well. I don't think that we, when, when we, when it comes to using this thing, I don't think that there are any parts or very few parts actually glued to it. 
It is just a cover to go on the other side to illuminate all the, or to let you see all the compartments all the way along. As, as best I remember from when I watched other people making this ship six, seven years ago, uh, or boat, I mean, sorry, uh, that uh, they, when they got through, you, you could see the full length of it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the viewers was wondering if I had buyer's remorse because I was starting to talk about the Yamato a bit uh, yesterday. I have no buyer's remorse in getting this. I have thought about it, as I, as I mentioned way back uh, in, at the beginning of this series, uh, I've been thinking about this. Uh, so I have no buyer's remorse here whatsoever. And talking about the Yamato, it's just sort of, if it can, can conveniently and, and without a whole lot of expense be purchased right here in Winnipeg, uh, or or got got into Winnipeg, uh, I you know I, I just might get it, and then as I mentioned, just do the best I can on it. But that's that's not going to be for, you know, twelve eighteen months or more. Who knows? Lots of stuff can happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh the sunrise this morning. Uh, Rod Adams, if you're watching, uh, there, we might get to see it this morning, a little better than yesterday. They're, they're not, sunrises just are not ex spectacular at this time of year. They're just, they don't have that vibrant, vibrant color that you sometimes get from the clouds that are in the, in the, uh, uh, in the, in the overhead, you know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I haven't done anything with it at all. Um. So we'll see what happens. If it's if it's decent, I'll be sticking that at the end of today's episode again. But uh, don't don't be thinking anything spectacular is going to happen. You're just probably going to be able to see it come up, and that's it. Um, okay, enough about the sunrise. Uh, I did yeah. I, I mentioned that the uh, there's nothing new on our paint. I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about here. But let's just uh, see what what can I, what can I do now. I think we do have to put some of these parts together, if I, if I remember. They have to, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The uh, the F1 has to be uh, attached to the G27, and then we've got to uh, put a back piece on H H7 goes on to G20. Okay, so so that's that's those little pieces right here. I can maybe carefully do that. Um, but uh, really, there's there's not a whole lot I can do here until my paint comes. Uh, okay, let's uh, try and do something at least. Maybe what I should be doing here is putting the macro lens on for this. Okay, this part has to go right on there. Okay, you can see here where this is looks a little bit like the drawing. And if we turn this over like this, then this part should go Let's see, this part would go like this, I guess. Get it turned around here. If I got that right? Yeah, I think, no, no, that's, that's not right. It's supposed to go like this. supposed to yeah I think it's supposed to go like this I'm trying to get the angle just right here no that now I've got it flipped over if 
and then I flipped it over again. If I, if I was to put this piece right here in the helping hands and hold it so that gravity can be our friend, then I can just sort of drop this down. You know, if it was being held in a, sort of like this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to very carefully put it in the helping hands here. And that, that way it'll be held like this. Because it, it just won't stay this way. All but, well, there, look made a liar out of me. No. Yeah, I'm going to get the helping hands going here. Now, when I first put it in the helping hands, I had it too much out at the end of the alligator clip, and I guess the rubber slowly let go, and it pinged off on me. Now, as luck would have it, I saw it go. I saw which way it went. I didn't see it land, but I knew which way it went, and I just sort of followed the trajectory along, and I found it way over by the ship case. I was lucky I saw it go. Okay, now I'm thinking I should maybe be using different tweezers here. Okay, this has to get turned over. There. It has dropped into place. Now I don't think I want to push right here because it'll flip up on the far end, I would think. But I, I think that's just about the way it's supposed to go. Now let's just get our, our extra thin here and just sort of meld that in place. That should be all right. I'm just trying to get rid of the burrs. Yeah, that's that's not going to fall out of there. Okay, for our G20 right here and our H7 right here. Um, I've been wondering about this little wheel that's supposed to go on. And it has to get turned over here like this and then it will go something like that okay it'll, it'll stay there once I get a little bit of uh, extra thin in the hole but I'm, I'm thinking that I, I had originally thought that when it comes to doing this uh, this little wheel which in real life, if we multiply apply this by 48, we'd know how big it actually was. Uh, would it be solid brass? I kind of wonder if maybe this would have been solid brass. Maybe what I should be doing here is checking the, the uh, painting and marking guide and, uh, and, and, and just see what, what do they say this wheel was. And, and also, just for the fun of it, I think I'm going to get my caliper because I'm curious just how, how big would this be? Yeah, if if we um, measured it and multiplied it by 48, because as you know, this this uh, entire ship is to 148th scale. I, I don't know why I have this need to get this to stay there all by itself, and I just don't think it's going to. <laughs> okay, enough poking. Oh well, there it sort of did. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to do this in millimeters. Okay, it is at zero. 
all right now this this does not have to be you know exact here we just want to get it approximate now let's be careful not to scratch our wheel uh, squash our, our wheel here okay that, that that'll be that'll be pretty close okay so it is 5.44 5.45 millimeters. Okay. 5.45 times 48 equals. Okay, so it's 26. Oh no, but pardon me, 261. 261 millimeters. So that would be, uh, um, what would that be? 260. We'll see if this will actually go that big. That'd be a pretty good size wheel. Did I, did I measure that right? Okay, well that's this is about uh if we go half of that that that's a pretty that's a pretty big wheel. I wonder if I've made a mistake here because I I I'm trying to envision this 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 wheel here forty eight times bigger and it just doesn't seem that big. I must have made a mistake here. Let me recalculate. Mm, no, I don't think I did. 261, it's all the way from here to here. So that's, uh, well, I guess maybe when you realize that it's only about 10 and a half inches, that's, that's yeah, that's, I guess that's about right. I guess I did do it right. Okay, yeah, so uh, it's probably um, a little a little bigger than some of the wheels that are on the things that I have down in my workshop like the hollow chisel mortiser or the table saw or something like that that has a wheel similar to that on it. So, uh, okay, now, now I know. Okay, here's what's happened here. This piece here is this piece right here. And as near as I can tell, unless I'm mistaken, this is actually an, an overhead part. I, I now it, it might go at a bit of an angle, but I don't think so. I, I got a feeling that that possibly this this oval shaped slot here is maybe where the torpedo would be coming from the an upper deck and going down through at an angle. Just let me let me grab one here very carefully and see if, see if my idea is right. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably, this, this is probably the, the, maybe the dead center, you might say, of the, of the uh, upper deck. Uh, in other words, all of these pieces that we're going to be mounting onto this will actually be hanging down from the ceiling, you might call it. Now, I'm sure on a, on a ship, uh, on a boat like this, it wouldn't be called a ceiling, but... Uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, we are very fortunate to have one of the viewers that's watching uh, who has served on two different boats, and right now his son is serving on one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are very lucky because I'm sure that he's going to be, hope, at least hopefully, he's going to be helping us, uh, you know, with terminology and stuff like that <laughs> okay now i had been wondering about what what color to paint this wheel which is actually in diameter about this big okay so uh i i had thought that it would probably be brass or bronze but but they're not and i have gone through through the painting and marking guide here and uh I think right near the beginning, yeah, we get right, right near the beginning is where we start to work in this in this area here. Um, I think that this piece, if you will notice that there is a, a little bit of a tongue right there, 
and there's a groove right there. Now this this actually would go like that, okay? And all, all these parts that we're going to be putting on are going to be hanging down. However, that's not what we're talking about here. You notice that the, that most of the wheels are red, okay? A few of them are green, all right? Now, I can't seem to find, you see, like here's, here, for instance, is I believe that this is the, the wheel in question right now. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. We take this little piece right here, and, you know, I should really have my macro lens on. Yeah, I'm going to put the macro lens on and, and move right in so that you can actually see this drawing really nice and clear. Yeah, you, I can definitely see that. Okay, let me get the macro lens on. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, holder dumber as a pointing device here. Here's our, here's our wheel in question. And it is black. It is not green. It is not red. It is black. At least that's what it looks like to me. I think that if a trumper, Trumpeter had wanted us to paint it red, they would have colored it red, like they did this cylinder here. Looks like maybe a fire extinguisher. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, we painted it black, probably, uh, probably gloss black. Okay, H335. That is what they want us to paint a lot of these things we're going to be making um, and gluing on the ceiling part of this bulkhead um, but this part right here I cannot find a line that is definitive or, or d goes straight to it like we got a, we got a little line here and it looks like possibly it's supposed to be the H18, which you can't you can't read further up there, but but it, it doesn't go in a, it's not straight. There is no line that seems to stop right on this part here that shows that this should be also H335. But I would think, I know I would think that you know if these other pieces were so would this part right here and then this piece right here is h335 and then then and then uh, just off to out of, out of sight there there's another piece that is similar to this and it is also 335 so uh, i think it's probably safe to do 335 whatever that happens to be Oh, sure. Well, I suppose I could retake that. You never know I had that little mishap. At least it didn't ping over, over onto the other side of the model table and... Uh, okay, now is this going to fit in there? I think it will. I gotta give Trump their credit. They sure do make their parts fit together well, for the most part. Okay, now we'll get our our uh, melding in there in the crack. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot on, but it's gonna it's gonna soak into the crack and become one piece here. As long as it doesn't run down the side, and I don't think it will. May as well, may as well pull it right so that it's going to, when it dries, it's going to be nice and even. At least that's the plan. Okay, when, when this, when this dries, it's going to look like it was welded all the way around. We'll look at it close later. We'll look at that other piece that we did too. Okay, I know I had said that we'd put the macro lens on and have a nice close look at these, but the, I believe that the sprue goo that the extra thin formed is still a little bit soft, which means it hasn't uh, evaporated as much as it's, as it's going to. So 
we'll we'll look at this uh, close up tomorrow morning. I think it'll be about as hard as it can possibly get tomorrow morning. Just took it out of the microwave probably five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start over here because I, I like olives. And I see there's lots of olives and mushrooms there. Oh no! I got ketchup stuff on my uh, painting and marking guide now. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Soggy. Mm. Okay, here's what I was talking about. The wheels are either red or green. Most mostly red. Uh, yeah, these are all red. There's three, four, four green ones. Red. Red, red, and I guess uh, probably the only black ones are the ones we're working with right now. Here's a couple of red ones. I, I, re I realize that you're you're far back. You just have to take my word for it. There's four red ones there. Uh, looks like five more red ones there. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot of a lot of red control wheels, even even on the engines. Um, oh, wait a minute, here, here, here's some blue ones, okay, um, all right, so the red, green, blue, and black, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, call her quits here for this afternoon, um, yeah, time got away on me, I, I haven't even done the sunrise yet, but I'm going to do it now, so hopefully uh, that'll be within the next 60 seconds. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow. Now I did look, but I did not see our walkers this morning. But I did see one runner